quality of infrastructure determines whether our societies thrive or fail. And it's a key indicator of our progress and stature as a nation. In the 20th century, infrastructure was at its dawning of its heyday. We were applying new technologies to permit people to have access to electricity, transportation, clean water. They connected all of us together and allowed commerce to thrive, but it also improved our lives. The really outstanding projects weren't just about engineering feats. They were about the social impacts of the infrastructure. The example that I really like to mention is the New York City subway. It's one price. That's a great equalizer. It could have been different. Many systems had zones where you pay more if you're further away. That social aspect is critical. Our founding fathers, when they were building out this nation, they were really looking at a way for us to expand opportunity. And yet what we realized and recognized was that we started to divide communities based off of racial and income lines. We didn't know about the impact of pollution on air and water. Those costs really lead to economic challenges in which people are unable to move up the economic ladder. One of those unintended consequences is that when rain crosses a road, the pollution goes right into that water system. As our infrastructure is aging, we have an opportunity to do things differently. We can really reimagine places with community. We can build our infrastructure differently so that it takes care of the pollution before it hits the bay and it's sized appropriately to really deal with the reality of climate change. We know now that infrastructure is a big driver of green jobs. We also know that people can actively participate in designing infrastructure and produce better environmental outcomes, better social outcomes, and more resilient communities. Our concept of high road infrastructure is a holistic approach to involving the people who are affected by the infrastructure in decision making, but also ensuring that we get multiple benefits. High road means you can connect the social, the environmental, and the resilient features. You get more people to support the project, and it can actually attract different kinds of financing sources. We also want the private sector to be involved. They're the ones that are creating the jobs from building infrastructure. And there may be other businesses that can be sparked through the investment in infrastructure. The environment is the result of a lot of different inputs from what is built, where the rivers are, where is there a road. When we make decisions about putting a project on, it can have certain impacts. So what we've done is we've used a GIS mapping technology and we've put as many layers of information as possible into our clean water map. What becomes powerful in the delivery structure is the ability to link what typically lives in silos, planning, design, construction, and maintenance. That information now becomes a collective story that adds to itself, so a project evolves. We can cross-reference it to where the nearest school is. Can we partner with a science class or a teacher or principal for educational opportunities? Are we building projects in a way that is helping a sub-watershed or a river that's in real trouble? get a little bit cleaner. So through technology, we have all this information at our fingertips so we can make better, more strategic decisions. One kind of infrastructure is gray infrastructure and the other kind is green infrastructure. When you think of gray infrastructure, you think of concrete and buildings and structures. When you deal with green infrastructure, you're thinking of something green, trees and gardens and rain barrels. Gray infrastructure is very, very expensive. We will always need gray, but we can also incorporate green infrastructure, which handles our stormwater. It handles our rainwater at the point where it hits the ground. One of the biggest challenges is really, you know, it's, it's very similar in business, the early adopter. To take the step to be courageous. Prince George's County embraced this and took that leap of faith to say, we're going to do it differently. You know, the government does some things well. One of our weaknesses is that we're not quick. But the private sector, if they're able to move capital and move big projects quickly. That's the type of scale and innovation that we wanted to bring into our restoration effort here. We ended up choosing Corvius because they have a real track record and sensitivity to community engagement and achieving multiple benefits. 
if we're going to try to achieve other goals outside of just environmental restoration, we need to help give small businesses the tools and the training and the mentorship to succeed. We have seven successful mentor proteges. All of them are getting work on the program. They have classes for county, job costing, public relations, customer service, everything that you need to be successful in business and the relationships that you build with other people. Green infrastructure is part of the green economy. A lot of cities have job training programs for people right in the community to be a part of this effort. So the jobs are right where the people in the community are and the green infrastructure is right there for the community to benefit. Everyone has a role to play in improving the quality of life in our communities. The investment in infrastructure is sorely needed. It's not just about roads and bridges. It's about clean water. It's about energy efficiency. It's about having clean air. We can't be basing design decisions on the last 50 years. We need to do it for the next 100 years. We need to have it also be designed in a way where we can adapt. We can do all of those things. We need to optimize them in every project. That's the high road.